Welcome back, YouTubers. Welcome to DreamWorld Observatory, and welcome to Backyard Astronomy. Today we're going to talk about something a little bit interesting. Classic SCT mural flop. What is that? Come back now, we'll talk about that. Okay, let's talk about mural flop. Mural flop usually happens with... Uh, an SCT, particularly with some of the older SCTs. Now, you don't really have them with the new ones because they come with what is called a mirror lock already mounted. Well, back uh, around 2000 or maybe just a little bit before 2000, Mead and Celestron and all those good boys, they were producing SCTs and they had a problem with mirror flop. Uh, that was a young man by the name of Chris Vandela is V-E-D-E-L-E-R. I hope I pronounced it right. I've been dealer. Um, he come up with a, a, a way of fixing that problem with about a dollar and a half worth of parts. Works pretty good. Well, he has a copyright on it, so I'm not going to read his article. But you can find his article in a site called M-A-P-U-G. And when you go to the site, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. If you go to the site, uh, you'll, you'll find a thing called Magpie or Magpug, M-A-P-U-G homepage. You need to click on that and go to a, a section that says Mead Telescopes Archives. Click on that. It's no longer supported, but it's a lot of information there. Then you need to scroll down to where you find something that says LX200 operations and, and miscellaneous topics click on that that's uh right there well actually you'll see that how you'll click on you'll go to lx200 mirror shift and focus and issues is what you're looking for look for the part that says mirror stabilizing bolt and say three parts that's the one you want to read now that'll give you a parts list and it gives you a long-winded version of of how to use it for visual and i believe it goes into using it for uh photography now, I got a copy of that years and years and years ago, and then uh, it got lost in the observatory with a big old case that I had in the old room. So when I built the new uh, extension on, tearing everything out, I come across that. Well, I had always used it since uh, I'd first seen it with focusing uh, for, a, for visual, but I never really tried it for um, astrophotography. Well, it wasn't until a few months ago that I found the final sheet, and I've been using it for astrophotography now for a couple of years because I come up with another way of doing it. I didn't realize I had lost a sheet. Uh, but anyhow, I did find a new sheet, and I finally figured out that that was a, another sheet that belonged to the original article that I had. And so uh, it's pretty much... I'm guessing I'm using it the same way he is. But anyway, I'm going to go to the telescope and I'm going to show you how to mount this. But first, I want you to see what it looks like. Now, just remember, I have tried to contact this, this young man and I cannot seem to get a hold of him. None of the, the email thing or the site thing that he has it listed is apparently not working. I can't seem to find anything. And uh, I haven't gotten any kind of replies from anybody. Um, so anyway... I don't think I'm hurting anything by, by sharing the, the item with you, uh, but you want to read the article, you need to go to that site I told you about. It's still there, and you need to read it. it. gives you all kinds of good information. Okay, here's the device. It's not the world, but a boat. This is about six inches long, and it's got some nylon spaces on it and spring. Now... I just put that together incorrectly, so let me back this up a second and put that in correctly. What you want to do for visual, and I don't even use it for visual no more because all I do is uh, astrophotography now. Uh, and I got where it takes too much to set up my stuff, and I like to uh, shoot astrophotography anyway. Uh, what I got here is I'm going to put these nylon pieces on. Now, the reason they got to be like this is because of, of where it's got to go. And I'll explain that to you when you get that. This is all it is. It's just uh, some nylon pieces, uh, 
uh, spacers and a, and a spring. You can get them from a hardware store. Now what you want to do is you want to put this in and I'll explain to you where it goes and how to use it. Okay, basically what we got is on the original, now this is the Mead Classic. Now this don't work on the new telescopes that you get today. But back around just before 2000 and right in 2000, uh, there was a little hole right here on the Mead LX200 uh, SCT. Now that little hole doesn't have threads in it. What you do is, uh, if you were going to send this off somewhere or, or ship it anywhere, there was a boat that came in here. I believe it was either a red boat or a red head. I can't remember because I don't remember what happened to mine. And you, you put that in there. You back your mirror all the way up and you put that in for shipping. That was so UPS or anybody else who got a hold of it wouldn't dump it down the stairs and break it all to pieces. That would keep the mirror from banging around. Well, uh, Chris come up with the idea. Uh, well, let me tell you what the problem is. When you go to focus your telescope uh, on SCT, the old SCT, this is the focusing knob. And you focus it and it gradually moved back. You had to go forward a little bit and then back it up and all this and you had to try to do it. Now, you could do it pretty good with visual because you were standing right there. But if you couldn't, you couldn't hardly do any photography with it because you couldn't keep the thing focused. So uh, what Chris come up with was, he come up with putting a bolt in there to see if he could stop it. Now what he done was, now you got to have all these washers here because see how long this is? And this has got to go inside it. That's not threaded. The part that's threaded is down in there where your telescope is, where your mirror is. And uh, I got it kind of far off right now because I've got it set up for using my, there you go. Now what you got to do is you got to screw it into that mirror bracket about two or three turns. So don't do no more than that. And then what you want to do is you want to run this here uh, nut all the way down. I don't have it in there. All right, now when you get it just about snug, now, you can snug this up. That's a spring there, and that's going to keep you from hurting it. You don't need to ratchet this thing on down to where it can't move. But what that will do is it will retard some of that backlash that's going on when you move it. Now, uh, now this would be for visual. This is for visual only right here. Now, that would kind of help. You could actually track something all night watching it visually and have a good time with it. And if, when you move to another object, I just loosen it up just a little bit, move around an object, and then run it back down after I focus it. Now that would just keep it pretty snug. Now, that was a real good idea. And I used it for years after I saw that. I mean, it worked pretty doggone good. I never had no uh, trouble with it. And I tried to do the same thing with my cameras. Now this is about the third or fourth camera I've had. And I got some good pictures, but I had to shoot quick because they would still move. And particularly when uh, you move the telescope in, there'd be a thing called a mirror flop. It wouldn't take it all out. It would still move a little bit. So I come up with, okay, how come I can't lock it down? So what I done was I took the spring off. And... Uh, I dropped the piece. Let me grab it, and we'll see what we got here. What I done was I I took the spring out, and I put it put it all together without uh, the uh, spring it to see what it would do. And I put it back in there. What I done was I moved my telescope around until I got to me. Now what I do is I get it around to a star, and I go ahead and put this on. And get it started. Remember now, you don't want to go over two or three threads. Uh, the reason is because this makes, if you go through that bracket, you're going to hit your mirror. You don't want to cause this mirror to be like stigma or anything like that. Now, you notice I just pushed it up with my finger. Now that's going to be, and now you need to get it out here because you don't, 
you don't want it to be interfering here because you got this little small nut. If you're using it to, to do photography, run it around. Well, here's what I do. I have gone to a star and I have come up with what I call a, 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 a rough focus. And then I take it and I, I, I tighten this up just a teeny bit and snug it. That's it. Now, when I want to do a focus when I'm going to something else, I'll put me a batten off mass on it and I'll have my electric focus and I'll do the focusing from the other room with my electric focus. I leave this alone. Don't come back and try to focus here. This will lock your mirror down. And then you finish focusing. Now, the trick is to do a rough focus with this first and then snug it. Don't lock it hard. Just snug it to where you know it don't it won't move. Now it won't move when you do that. And then do your batten off mass focusing with uh, electric focus. Today, what they have is they have built-in focuses. Everybody's got all these kind of focuses. And you do have one already like this on the new telescopes. They have what they call a mirror lock. And basically speaking, it works pretty much the same way. I mean, you're just locking the, the uh, mirror uh, housing down and uh, keeping it from flop when you go to like a, a meridian flip. Or keeping it from moving while you're doing long term, uh, long time focus, uh, 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 astrophotography. This will actually work pretty good. Now, my hat's off to Chris for this. That was a brilliant idea. Now, what really tickled me was the day I found that other piece of paper, and I, and I was reading it, trying to figure out what that was. And I said, "Man, this is another piece of that other." And what I had really thought, you know, when I looked at, I, I went and got the other two sheets. I think it's two sheets, and I looked at it. And it said two of three. Well, you know how you, when you print something out, it always, sometimes it prints out a third sheet. My printer always printed me out a third sheet if it had nothing on it. I assume that's what it was because I never found a third sheet. It was years later before I actually, when I rebuilt this observatory, that I actually found the third sheet inside of the cabinet. And it had never been put in my book, so I, I just misplaced it. But it turns out that that works pretty much. That's pretty much like what he says to do on that final thing is, is he locked it down by himself just like I'm doing right here. That's the way I'm interpreting it. Don't take my word on this. Read his article and be very careful with this, especially if you're going to be locking it down hard. Don't lock it down hard. Just see how loose I got that? You just screw this in and then snug that. That's all you need. Because see, see, that can't move. Now, with a spring on it, it can move. And you can still focus a little bit with it. But without the spring, it's locked down. So don't do anything else. If you're going to focus now, you need a, you need electric motor on here or, or one of your electric uh, stepping motors that you're, everybody's using. Uh, and focus with that. Do your final focus with that. Somebody called me on this. I had mentioned it and I had pointed to it a couple of times that I was going to bring this up. So I've been waiting, trying to see if I could find a way to get a hold of this Chris guy. And I can't seem to get a hold of him. But anyway, Chris, I'd like to thank you for it. Uh, it was a brilliant idea. And it works like a charm. Remember, this is for the old classic Mead LX200 or LX50 or any of those old classic ones. They don't come with a mirror lock, but that's a way of doing it. Works pretty good. As you can see, in those days, if you look at this picture right here, you can tell uh, we did a lot of things in those days to stop mirror flop. Even resulting down to, if you look right close, you'll see a chain and a padlock. Tried a lot of things. Nothing seemed to work. Thank you, Chris. Good job. Okay, now that's a real good idea that Chris had. Uh, now all you guys and ladies who have the LX200, the classic version, the old version, not the new ones, this will be something you might want to uh, look into. 
Now, one of the reasons I went ahead and did this is because I was, you know, we've had a lot of bad weather here lately, so uh, I'm perusing around on the uh, internet looking at other people's sites and all, and, and I come across a few comments by this. Uh, someone was putting down the LX200, the old LX200s, and the other guy was trying to defend them. Well, and, uh, and, and the big issue was about mirror flop and, uh, and not being able to stop the focus from drifting. Well, this is one way to do that. I, there is nothing else wrong with that telescope if you make a few additions to it. Like I've added a focuser, I've added this. There's a couple of other things that I've done on there that are homemade I'd like, I'm going to bring up one day. But anyway, that being said, uh, that is a good answer. Uh, now I'm going to include down at, uh, in the bottom down here in the, in the comments where, where in the uh, description of the uh, video uh, how to get to that, uh, uh, the site where you need to go to to get this. You need to get this and print it. And, and then the parts list is inside that list. Uh, if you have any questions about it, I don't think you can contact them because I have tried and tried and I can't get nothing. Uh, I might, maybe I'm not doing it correctly. But uh, contact me, send me a comment or a PM, and, uh, and uh, I'll see if I can help you with it. But uh, if you don't understand how to put that in there, don't put it in there. You need to make sure you have that article and make sure you understand it. Um, I took chances with it, and it, and it worked out okay with me. Uh, right now, I love it. Now, let me make one thing. Uh, I, I remember I told you to... Um, when you go to do the lockdown for photography, there is no spring on it. Don't put a spring on it. Put it down, snug it, not not ratchet, just snug it down. That's going to lock your mirror. Don't do any other focus there. Do it with the electric focuser or the stepping focuser that you got, whatever kind of focus you got, but not on that telescope. You use it uh, differently. Don't mess with that focus knob. So your focus will be done as a rough focus, when you put that on, you do a rough focus and lock it down. Your final focus, that's the one I keep mentioning everybody, final focus was going to be with the electric focus or some kind of remote focus. Uh, you don't want to turn that knob anymore because it's basically locked down. You're damaging your mirror. So what's happening is now you'll have your camera and everything for, uh, be attached to your so-called electric focuser and that's what's going to move, not your mirror. That's the idea behind it. It's rough focus with the main mirror. And, it, and it, one thing about that, it can stay locked down all night. In fact, when I lock it down, I don't mess with it no more. As long as I don't change the focal length of that telescope or anything, and I'm using the same camera, it just bolts right up there. And the only thing i got to do is put a batten off mass on it and find focus. I don't have to do any other focus. It's there. It's only if you've got to change if you're going to change cameras or you're going to change focal length, you need to undo that, that bolt before you do your rough focus again because you may have to move something. You don't want to try that. But like like right now, where you saw my camera sitting there, that's, I hope to go shoot tonight or tomorrow night. And uh, I've got it locked down right there because it's locked down exactly where I had it. And all I have to do is go to a star, do, a, do my batting off mass, and I'm done. I'm ready to go. All right. I hope I've clarified that. Uh, that's kind of a disclaimer. I want you to understand. And uh, anyway, go to uh, MAPUG site and get that article. If you don't like it, that's fine. Just don't try it without it. Be sure you have it because he he, he's got a real good, in fact, the article he's got on there is a little bit longer than what I printed out because I don't remember all that being on there. But uh, it's very good. Anyway, uh, if you like what you saw, click like below. If you didn't like it, click like anyway. Uh, if you haven't already signed up for the site, have, uh, go ahead and subscribe and, and ring the little bell. And you'll get a, uh, a notification next time we post a video. Uh, I hope this one here uh, is will help a few of you. Uh, I do realize now there are more SCTs out there than I thought there were from the old classic years. Uh, they're good scopes. There's nothing wrong with them. So until next time, we're going to wrap this up. Until next time. Clear skies and keep looking up. This is Stan Bone at Framework Observatory.